Any changes, anything to the minutes? Any changes to the minutes? <coughs> Motion to accept by Jay, who seconded? Second. Seconded by Ron. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Treasurer's report, um, it was sent out today. I realize it was a little late. If anybody hasn't seen it and you'd like to see a copy of it, I do have it up here. Um, Dave sends his apologies. He's not feeling well, so he's not going to, to make it tonight. So if you have t &Es, please give them to me. I'll sign them, and I'll be hooking up with him in the next couple days and get them to him so we can get those processed. So. Do you know... Do you know if whether he got the Quicken books? In? Yes, he did. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Questions on the treasurer's report? Motion to accept? So moved. Second. Second. Choose from a number of different people there, Kurt. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Extensions? Enforcement list. I have my copy because I have to do them in my report. Okay. Um, Jean Fontes from Brooklyn, New York, assessed a civil penalty of $2,000. Entire amount suspended pending no further violations for a period of three years for violation of Part 800.16A11. Uh, the suspension is deemed to have been served concurrent with his last day of employment on 10 11 13 and ending 7 5 16. Assessed a civil penalty of $1,000. The penalty is stayed pending a period of probation, placed on probation for two years, effective 7 5 16. Michael Schwartferger from Fredonia. And Zeif. Hedrington from Brax, suspended for one year, two months deemed to have been served concurrently with his period in restricted status with his employer. The reigning 10 months of state pending no further violations for three years. Assess the civil penalty of 2000 1500 shall be suspended pending no further violations for three years. 880.16A13. Other communications received a letter from the state that DePoleville Fire Department um, submitted all their information for the BLSR uh, update and they re remain valid and active and their new expiration is September 30th of 2019 and from North Pole same thing theirs expires August 31st. Um, we also received a letter that there's a few agencies that they've sent a second request to do the update so we've got a We'll be working with those agencies to make sure they get it in because the letter states if they don't have it in with a period of time, they're going to lose their BLSF FR status. So we don't want to see anybody do that. The also, Josh Genter from Lowville, we had submitted him as our BLS support provider of the year, and he has won that. So he will be receiving his award at Vital Signs in October. And SUNY Canton. EMS, um, they have been issued a agency code as BLSFR. Any other correspondence? Any other correspondence? Okay, moving on. Mr. Devers, some school CMAT. Hi. <coughs> um, if if you haven't gotten the uh, state report, it should be emailed to you. You can contact me. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet, mainly because I don't feel well. All right. So um, the um, we met last week. Uh, one of the things that. Um, I was kind of proud of is at the very end of the meeting, uh, Denise Young gave a presentation on um, some of the services that their office provides about the future of health care. And I really think that we as a council should see that presentation if, it, if she would be willing to do it again because it will 
take us into what the future of EMS should, will be looking like. And uh, I think we need to, part of our job is to prepare for the future in, in a leadership capacity and prepare our agencies that we represent to meet the needs of the future. And um, that's something I, uh, it was an excellent presentation and I hopefully at some meetings she'll be here to present it and give us the EMS version. It was excellent. I, I will arrange, it's disrupt for those that are interested. We'll have her um, we'll and, 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 and I think more, more uh, the thing is I think more of our agencies should participate because that's the future of EMS. Um, the only thing that um, on, le on the uh, director's report that I'm going to remind us as representatives is to remind our agencies that are ALS to get their applications in uh, to, uh, the, uh, to the regional office, Mr. Morrissey, so they can process it for their narcotics license and try to do it by the end of the year. Because it's coming down the road at some point in time. There'll be a <coughs> deadline date. Our region has already do it, done that. Okay. The big thing is remember vital signs uh, in October, second weekend, I think. I'd have to look at my calendar. But it's, it starts, uh, I think, the 13th and goes through the 16th. I know at the pre-conference, uh, if somebody needs a ride, uh, I'd be willing to give somebody a lift. I'm going down um, Wednesday night, and we'll be coming back Sunday. So if somebody needs a lift, I, I will. Uh, I'll just won't say any more than that. I won't charge you for gas like somebody else I know. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> uh, as far as the CMAC uh, went um, and the council went, one thing the uh, check and eject program uh, that some of our agencies are participating in have, uh, was voted to be extended and recommended to the commissioner to sign. Um, as far as training in that, as far as uh, critical uh, care goes, there is a tag out there and those of us that are serving on the tag we're just not going to make any comments because we don't want any rumors going on until we make our presentation or recommendation to the uh, state council. Um, as far as the peer committee, um, as far as my minutes, Debbie can uh, kind of update what went on at that. But one of the things I wanted to, to say, uh, I feel very proud that uh, Josh Genter uh, has got the award for BLS Provider of the Year, even though he's a, um, a, a paramedic now. But I had the opportunity to run with him quite a bit at uh, search and rescue in his earlier years, and I'm very proud that uh, he got that award. We should, as a region, be very proud. On the peer committee, I just wanted to clarify in the minutes um, that you had, there was some clarification, a couple of little errors, uh, where it talks about that the uh, eight, they only got nominations by eight of the councils. That was to start out in the beginning. Only eight councils sent in nominations. But by the time it was all said and done, uh, almost all of the, uh, the councils did submit uh, nominations. Uh, for their for their regions, but th we did discuss a few things, and one is is that okay, January first, two thousand seventeen. When you submit the nominations, they're going to be for the year of two thousand sixteen. So you guys can start thinking now. There may be some great things that have been been done already. You don't have to wait till April of next year, especially when some of your councils don't, <clears throat> well, our council doesn't meet every, you know, month. We aren't going to meet again, maybe November, but then February. So when January 1st comes, you know, uh, 2016 is done. So get those nominations in. The other thing was there was a concern on some of the nominations that are presented and signed 
you know, see them deliver from our REM skulls, do not meet the eligibility or even the criteria. And they're, they're submitted. For the wrong uh, award. Also, some of them, um, they feel don't really meet to the standard of what a state award would be. It would be more of an award you would give in your agency or give in your uh, county or at the REM score or something like that. So uh, the peer, peer committee decided that if a nomination comes in through the REM score that does not meet what they feel is at the level of a state award, that they may not fill those or put a, uh, nominate somebody for that award. So really look at uh, your nominations, what you're submitting that person for. Ron? A lot of times is it not that how the application is wrote up, a lot of times it's the person doesn't know how to write the application? Uh, that may have been in the past, but we spent a lot of time in the last couple of years uh, cleaning them up and rewriting them. All right. As a matter of fact, for once in, in our, our region here, I had to contact a couple of the people that submitted the nomination and go over it with them and have them word it and resubmit it. So that is the thing, but you, we got to make sure that they meet the criteria and the right. eligibility. Right. And, and ours are going to need to be in, just as last year, are going to need to be in by March 1st so that the committee has time to review them, so that we have time to get the awards to present at Spring Fling. So we'll get all that information out here soon, let people know they're due March 1st, and maybe we'll even put a little reminder in there that it's for this year type deal to remind folks. Yeah, it's for 2016. We do get a few of them statewide that they submit somebody for something they did in two, like uh, 2017 when it, it's supposed to be for the year before. So make sure you submit for the year before. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Anybody that needs a copy of the minutes that don't get it, they can contact me or contact uh, uh, Debbie Singleton, and we'll email it to you if you have an email address. Any questions for SEMSCO or CMAC? Next meeting is January 11th and 12th, I believe. Mm -hmm. RMAC, Ian. All right, so um, we had a good meeting tonight. I'm first going to bring forth the seconded motions. Um, the first seconded motion from the REMAC was to move forward with the collaborative protocols. Motion. Thirty comes as a seconded, so you're good there. Is there any question on that? Everybody, they've been forwarded to everybody. Everybody's had an opportunity. If you didn't put paper in your printer, then you were uh, sadly uh, surprised there with the number of pages that it uh, spit out for you. If there's no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? I would like to thank Dave Sherman and Ann Smith for all their work on the protocols. Um, it's kind of an overwhelming process. When we started, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago, and Ann started putting together in PowerPoint all the changes, and I think you quit at page... 77. We were like, it was just overwhelming. So, um, but working Slides. as a collaborative and with the committee, I, I'm very confident that we can can make this happen with minimal minimal problems. So thank you to yep. both of you. Um, a seconded motion to approve the updated albuterol and blood glucometry policy statements in education that was sent out to everybody. Any questions on those? No questions, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? A seconded motion to approve the REMAC operating guidelines that were sent out to everybody. I would sent those out probably what, four or five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? A seconded motion to put the uh, BLS training modules on the CME website for the program agency discretion. 
which will allow BLS providers to go online and do the education for the BL BLS modalities um, like albuterol and blood glucometry, hence making the um, training officer's job potentially a little bit easier at the agency level. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We, um, we had an application for a couple of CME evaluators um, that were tabled at this time um, based on the um, discussion to revamp the CME evaluator list and process, which we'll talk about more in my report. Um, I will bring forth the motions in my program agency report for the BLS modalities that we have. Um, there was a motion that if equipment if it is expired on an ambulance, it needs to be replaced. Um, that comes forth as a seconded motion, and that was based uh, on something that I had told an agency I would bring to this body to see what their feelings were. Um, following the misunderstanding that if equipment was not open or yellowed that it could stay on the ambulance but it may be a question of sterility so all expired equipment needs to be replaced on ambulances so that comes back as a seconded motion that we we this way we'll notify all the agencies well, maybe even put something in there letting people know it's, you know, two by twos have expirations now, four by four, some of that. Because some agencies may not even be thinking of that. They may be thinking only meds and other things. So this will give agencies an opportunity to go through their supply and, and get their dunnage out of there. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Okay. Um, this next motion. We're going to ask for a roll call vote on. Um, as many of you know, the narcotic, for the requirement for CC and paramedic agencies to carry narcotics went through in July. We still have some agencies that do not have that. I'll go over an overview in my report. Um, but a motion came forth that narcotic application paperwork in the North Country must be submitted by 1231-16 or um, they can't practice ALS. So it needs to say must be submitted to the regional office. DOH regional office. Yeah, DOH. yeah submitted to DOH. DOH. Yeah. 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 Syracuse yeah. office, attention John Harris. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I would ask uh, Ask the chair to ask the secretary to do a roll well, call. Let's see if anybody uh, has any questions on that. What, what was the, the final date for this? That they do the twelve thirty one. Twelve thirty one sixteen. That they have their paperwork and for those that do not have it, which are handful. And this isn't a surprise. We've sent letters to these agencies. We've been trying to work with them. So when they get this, it's not going to be. Oh my God! I didn't know anything about this. They've all we've all reviewed this with these agencies, so it's it's not it's not something that they don't know is coming. And please, we we'll, we as a regional office and staff, all of us, have more than willing to come help write them, mm -hmm. help figure out whatever they need here. And we haven't gotten letters returned on some. We haven't gotten phone calls returned on some. So it's kind of drawing a line in the sand. We're looking for them to to move forward to this. They need to, to actively move with this. Is this for the outlying areas? Is there a, is there a reason that they're you know, afraid for security, their ambulances, if they're not watched 24-7? You know, uh, I think it's just that they have limited ALS staff to begin with, and they just have not been able to Hasn't been Get a this, or it hasn't been a priority or they haven't wanted to move <clears throat> forward with it. The state is simplifying the uh, paperwork too in the process. 
Right. That's pretty. But they need to take the initiative. I think that's the thing here that we're looking for. How many are we looking at right now? Um, Approximate. Only a handful. handful. And I'll have a list in my report. I don't know the exact number. Let me just speak to the securage issue, okay? We made everybody write in to their policy and procedures that obviously it has to be secured and double locked in the vehicle. But we've also said for security wise, if someone comes up, because heaven knows today with drug seekers and narcotics, if somebody comes up, you know, puts their hand on the jacket and says, I got a gun, believe them, <laughs> okay? Even though you think it's, give them the drugs, <clears throat> let them go, and call the cops. Lock the, you know, get safe, make sure the crew gets to a safe place, and then lock, you know, lock the doors, call the cops, file a police report, and that's it, okay? We don't want people to get hurt, but we've had relatively few incidents, I say very, very few, but we have had one or two, but nothing dramatic over people seeking off ambulances, okay? Um, this, is, this, is a hev this is a heavier than traditional lift for paperwork and accountability because you have to, if you have morphine and Versed, you have to do reports every six months. If you have fentanyl and ketamine, you've got to do it every quarter. It is a bit of paperwork burden and there is some liability for the corporations and so forth. But like anything, it's a standard of care and we're trying to move people toward a good quality of standard of care. But again, anybody who wants to work with us, we'll I jump for joy, we, you know, drive right up and meet with them. But We've in the little stragglers we've got left, they're kind of dragging their feet, I guess is the best way to say that. Was well, not grant money provided to buy safes for virtual labor that needed one? That was in Jefferson, Jefferson County. County. So, yeah. in Jefferson, that's not an issue. Everybody Correct. in Jefferson has had their ALS since we did it. I think we've been a year and a half. Yeah. Now, one other thing that has come up a lot of places is that everybody has to have electronic locks. That is not true. However, that's not what the code says. Now, many of the pharmacists who are electing to be involved with this process have insisted upon that, and I can't control that from us as the Department of Health. Um, but a number of uh, Jefferson, that was a requirement, okay? And I have in the mid-state region, that is the required there. But I have other places that are still doing with just two metal boxes with keys and seals, okay? So it can be that other way. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions. If services would call, we'd be happy to walk them through the process, but they aren't answering our phone letters and other associated communications. Pretty soon, if we let it go much longer, it'll be the dog sleds. We'll probably be trying to get to these folks there with being the outline. So, see if we can get John up and get him done before the weather gets uh, too bad. Any further question or discussion on this? If there isn't any, I'm going to ask Dave as secretary to do a roll call vote. And to clarify, yes means that you're in favor of that 1231-16 deadline. Correct. <clears throat> Mike Brunzo. Yes. James Barr. Yes. Joe Bova. Yes. Jim Devers. Yes. Mark Devers. Yes. Debbie Fultz. Yes. Ken Gardner. Larry Gerard. Yes. Jay Gwinnett. Yes. Ron Hance. Yes. Walt Lehman. Yes. Kristen Mead. I'm going to stand in and I'm going to answer some questions. Okay. Uh, Robert Meyer. Yes. Carol Munch. Yes. Dave Sherman. Yes. Bobby Simpson. Yes. Debbie Singleton. Yes. Ron Smith. Yes. Dottie Souter. Yes. <clears throat> 18 yes, one abstain. Motion passes. There you go. I think most of the rest I will be covered in my program agency report, so I will defer it to there. Which is next. Anyway. Oh, which is next, so I guess I'll just start that. <laughs> All right. So, just some little general information. Um, we completed the fourth quarter report. 
uh, the end of June. I've been back for a year now. Our payments, once we voucher, after our initial delay in getting everything in place, I'm happy to say we are now receiving them five to seven days after the voucher, which is outstanding. Um, we just received some new vouchers for future remit remittance. We worked with SUNY Canton. They obtained the new BLSFR as identified by the correspondents. We spent, we as in Kurt, spent a large amount of time cross-referencing all charts to uh, agency files to state databases and worked with the state to correct multiple discrepancies regarding REMAC approved modalities like albuterol, blood glucose, Narcan, all of those. Um, added a CON section to the website under REMSCO REMAC. This will be important for you folks because this will probably be the spot where a CON gets posted for viewing, but it includes the uh, general information regarding the timeline that we use for CON applications, uh, links to the policy statement 0606 and public health law and along with the pricing information. We transitioned to the new CME online website over the summer. It has more functionality. It incorporates information that we previously kept in another agency database so it'll make it easier for us to keep the records. Um, and the stuff that we kept in that database is also stuff that's required by our healthcare deliverables. This will also allow us to track those providers better who have um, done education like the BLS albuterol and blood glucometry once we put it online, so it's a great feature. Um, with the check and inject program, we're helping the Melrose region and reminding agencies to send their pre and post tests and tax exempt forms, and in some cases, their order forms for those who are enrolled. Um, interestingly, um, the data at the state level, when they did the report, showed that the North Country had over 200 uses of auto injectors. Um, we think there was a mapping problem with the data because we even beat out New York City. Wow. So we're going to dig deeper in that and see what happened there, but this year's data seems to um, look a little better. As an opioid overdose program, we've given out approximately 200 Narcan kits. Um, more have been ordered, but we're still waiting on those. Um, we only have like five left at the program agency. Um, so we had talked about um, a couple CME evaluators that were tabled and it has nothing to do with them themselves. It has to do with our process and the need to change the process. The REMAC supported that we develop a plan for regional skills nights in each county. All current evaluators in good standing may apply to be a regional evaluator, reapply I should say. Um, approval process of evaluators will include skill sessions and demonstrations. Uh, MOU with the region should be completed by these folks who are interested to do three skill sessions per semester, two of which will be held um, evening and or weekend. Um, and dates will need to be in place and approved by the program agency prior to the start of the semester so people can plan accordingly. Um, and to look towards doing uh, reimbursement on a per provider credentialed basis if they meet <coughs> criteria set forth in the MOU um, and for this to start in 2017. So I will defer to the chair, but I believe that once we have this in place, it will go to the REMAC for approval and then it will come to this body for approval as those funds for reimbursement um, would c come from the REMSCO. And what we're looking at is for tax implications, mm -hmm. we won't let somebody do more than $600 a year because when you get over that, then you get into having to give them 1099s and report it and all that stuff. So um, we're going to keep it below that. There's enough. Um, Evaluators, if they want to sign up, we should have great coverage. We're going to have a inventory list of what you must have to do the evaluations. 
it's not going to be any of the, more of this. We'll pretend you've got that and you're doing this and pretend this and pretend that. They're going to we're going to have the equipment list and people are going to have to use what's on there. The scenarios are going to be um, pre-written so people are following the same scenarios. So there's some continuity with it, where it's being done. And we're going to kind of watch a little bit and see if people are utilizing some different evaluators and you know how things are going. We're going to go do some on-site visits when we know some of these are going on to see how they're going. We may ask for feedback from some of the people that participated. What, what can we change? What's good? What's bad? So um, a chance to enhance our program and to make sure that people are getting the, the additional education and training that they need. So you will see more to come on that. So these will come um, forth as a seconded motion, medical director changes um, for Colton Rescue, which we actually already had voted on online because they had to send in their recertification paperwork and Dr. Arenas was uh, no longer in the area, but I'd like to have an official um, vote on it as well, along with DePaulville Volunteer Fire Department, uh, Dr. Maynard replaced Dr. Burris for their um, emergency health care provider and any other modalities they may wish to apply for. So, um, Carthage Area Rescue, we're, we're looking for a medical director for them right now. So, seconded motion to approve Colton and DePaulville medical directors. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Um, these level of care changes come forth as a seconded motion. Um, Constableville will be changing their level of care from AEMT to BLS. Hammond from critical care level to AEMT and Madrid from critical care to AEMT. Um, Constableville no longer has an AEMT provider. Hammond and Madrid have both made the decision to change their level of care um, versus put narcotics on board. When will those be effective? Following this meeting. As soon as they receive it. Following this meeting and I have time to get out the communications. Now, Ann, would you go do another inspection on them to make sure that they pulled the things that are different between a CC and an advance? Well, I can do that if they would like that. I'm usually in the letter we advise them to. Might just help them to help them get stuff. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so just as an FYI, um, New York Airbrake and Purcell Construction, both in Watertown, updated their public access to fibrillation applications. SUNY Canton BLSFR put in a public access to fibrillation application. Morgan Stanley in Potsdam and Watertown. Uh, we received the collaborative agreements we were waiting for. We received one notification of AED usage at Robert Moses State Park. Um, epinephrine, we were notified that they have an epinephrine auto injector at the Farm Day ca Camp um, on Highway 68 in Canton. And then I'll put forth as a seconded motion for approval. Um, for BLS CPAP, for Waddington Rescue, and Governor Volunteer Rescue Squad. The albuterol has already been approved. It's just a notification of the new medical director. Any questions on the BLS CPAP? All those in favor of approving them? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, BLS Blood Glucometry, Waddington Rescue. Um, I'll put forth a seconded motion to approve them pending receipt of their limited lab registration. And then I will add to that motion 
Two hours to approve Waddington, Three Mile Bay, West Stockholm, Cape Vincent, and again, Colton Fire Department's an update for Naloxone or Narcan. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Just thought I'd share a little report on uh, Narcan usage that I sent to the state. I mean, I'm not going to read all the numbers off. Uh, again, I'm not sure we're getting all the correct data. And all of the all of these uses, except for four in Jefferson County, were done by ALS agencies, but there's no way to differentiate whether it was an ALS or a BLS provider who did that um, out of the image trends system. The same or at least that we had found there may be we had we did not find it the same for st. Lawrence that it was all ALS agencies except for two that gave that any questions on that Narcan you must not have a problem over in Lewis County huh? I think that I know there is so I think it's a data problem when you when you say given by ALS agency does that mean that an ALS provider gave it? We don't know. Don't we can't differentiate it. that. Two of the uses were by BLS agencies, so we assume that right. BLS. And that's an assumption because I run with a BLS agency. So it could be an ALS provider running with that BLS agency. It, just to give you a point of reference, in Binghamton, which has like 99% of the agency, the whole system, in the, that region, they looked at it, and a lot of the Narcan administrations were by AEMTs working on their BLS fire departments. Yeah. Okay, so there is a lot of a lot of AEMTs given. There are some, but the majority of it's being given by AEMTs. So it's been a really busy summer. We've been out there trying to do inspections and, and meet with different agencies. There's a whole list. I'm not going to read them all off again. Um, I am. I did reschedule to go to Lions Falls. I'm hoping to hit Beaver Falls that day as well um, because I'll be in the area at, on the 29th. Um, in Richville ALSFR, I was scheduled to inspect them last Thursday. They requested a reschedule. And then I had the question on the expired equipment we already talked about. Um, so. We've been fairly busy getting ALS inspections done. Any questions on those? Um, Norfolk's was completed to upgrade them to a paramedic level. We had approved that previously pending our inspection like two meetings ago. So that was completed. So here's the agencies without narcotics. We sent them a letter. Um, and the only thing that we asked for in this letter was that they advise us by September 1st in writing what their intentions were. So we had an idea when we came to this meeting. You know, we've also offered to help and work with all these folks. Um, but it, again, they need to take the initiative. So we have Lewis, in Lewis County, we have Beaver Falls, Lions Falls, and Turin Volunteer Fire Company. Um, my understanding is Beaver Falls and Lions Falls are going to be pursuing this. Turin, I have not heard back from them, but my understanding was that they were, were potentially going to change their level of care. Um, Herman is telling me that their plan was approved. Um, last I knew their safes weren't inspected, but we're not sure on this, so we're going to look at that. I'm going to be working with John on that. DeKalb Richville Fire District, um, they're discussing moving forward with that. Uh, Hammond Fire and Rescue downgrade or change their level of care, as did Madrid. Um, Norfolk, uh, we're kind of looking at that. My understanding is they got their license. They were waiting or we had to get their safes in to get inspected. So I'll be working with John on that as well. In Rensselaer Falls, I learned didn't have their narcotics on board, but I think that has been since rectified. Um, but they did have their application. So that's where we are. Questions? There's our list of EPCR agencies. Um, 
The newest change is uh, Town of Watertown Ambulance switched their vendors. And they it's extremely important if you have agencies out there that you're working with or they're going to electronic PCR from paper, we have to have their go live date. And this body endorses them. It is DOH that approves them. Um, so we have to have a go live date, preferably at the beginning of the month because it makes tracking easier when they move from one system to another. Um, but even if you, they change vendors, you have to go through the same process, submit an MOU, notify the program agency, and give us a go live date. Um, so just make sure if people are talking about going electronic and just have them contact our office because then it's really a simple we can simplify the process 100 percent for them we talk to you know the state we send them notice once the regions endorsed it and uh in no time they get their approval letter and kurt is able kurt has to set them up with an image trend account so again, it goes back to working in the system and, and keeping the region in the loop. So we have Guilfoyle, Star Lake, Wells, Wellesley Island that are in the process. Um, currently right now as it stands, 58% of our PCRs are still paper in the region. Um, but again, if, if Guilfoyle goes electronic, that's going to change that number nicely. Okay, it's hard to pull overall data. It's very labor intensive because we still have the, we still have so many paper PCRs. Spring Fling, Debbie secured Steve Berry for next year as the keynote and to do presentations. We'll be um, incorporating some local instructions to complete the core content programs. I've completed those trainings that are list, competed, not, <laughs> I forgot now there. Um, those trainings that are up there and I'll be doing Briar Hill asked me to come and do their check and inject so the night of 929 I'm going to do a full circle from Lewis County right around to Briar Hill again the check and inject program just to give an idea um, there was 476 agencies enrolled statewide and there were 32 administrations during the demo project <coughs> Um, and they gave a bunch of other statistics, so if anybody wants to learn more, talk to me later. Um, but as Jim said, they did extend um, that program until the Commissioner of Health makes uh, their decision. Did I hit everything off my macro I think you did. Any questions for Ann on program agency? <coughs> We'll have to work with her to try to get a little more stuff done for the next quarter so that, you know, there's a little bit more there. We'll see if we can't improve that. Uh, executive committee, uh, we are going to be having an executive committee meeting. One of the uh, charters in the bylaws is we have to have a uh, well-balanced council. And we're supposed to have people from fire departments and ambulances and uh, educators and at large and all that and our dynamics has kind of changed so we're going to sit down you may get an email from me saying you know do you run with an agency where do you think you fit type deal so that we can put that together and, and see where we're at to make sure we're supposed to be a truly cross-section of the three county region to make sure that we're that we're doing that so if you see an email and it says you know do you run with an agency or where do you think you fit that's why it's because we're looking at that so that we can identify every person with where they, what box they fit in to make sure that we've got everything covered. Deb, training and ed. Uh, <clears throat> training and education uh, met uh, at 6 o'clock and um, I have good news that uh, SUNY Canton did receive their core sponsorship renewal. Uh, we had great discussion today. We talked about uh, uh, distance learning, we talked about the lack of uh, CLIs and CICs in some uh, parts of the uh, region. Uh, we talked about upcoming courses and um, fostering new instructors and uh, using regional faculty to, to uh, audit courses. 
uh, instructors or to pop in and just visit and see how they're doing. Um, Debbie had asked me that she wanted for the last year from the course sponsors uh, the summary sheet for their um, when their EMT courses, the pass fail, the areas that uh, uh, that we could look at the areas where students were weakened, look at areas where students excelled in, um, see what we could uh, what we could find, and if we identified any patterns, um, course sponsorship wise or regionally wide, and uh, so the course sponsors will be getting those to me so that we can. Uh, we can review the courses for the last year. Any questions for education and training? One additional uh, thing. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is, is at a central office now, we are looking at classes that have abnormally high fail rates mm -hmm. and we're sending them back to the course sponsor and asking them to debrief and explain to us why the rate has been such and what were some factors in doing that. Um, and um, it's proven to be very enlightening in some cases of some of the things going on. Um, and um, the other thing is Michael and I are trying to get out more just to go to practical skills exams. Uh, we will be probably, we're now getting um, monthly lists of where they are which we weren't easily able to pull out of the database which is helping us target where to go. So you'll probably see our smiling faces here in the winter and fall. Uh, as things go on. So uh, we will be go getting out and trying to get around to some of the sponsors out and about. So that's just one of the other changes going on. Yep. Any other questions? That's my report. Thank you. Ron Smith, CON. Okay. Haven't heard anything more from Carthage Rescue on expansion, CON. I hear rumors Governor is getting ready to turn in an application. But the major news of the night is Eigensburg has turned in an application for expansion. It was received the 6th of this month. Uh, we found some serious problems with it on the 12th. And I called Ken the 14th. I had a meeting at his station earlier today and got most of the information needed and the corrected information needed and earlier tonight here I got the rest of it. I believe we have the rest of it. You, you didn't find serious problems. Uh, you didn't find serious problems. <laughs> uh, actually missing uh, F and C stuff is serious problem. It will not go forward from the state with uh, resumes missing. But I will. There are easily correctable problems. Yeah. But Oh, easily correctable. And stuff that, if you're not doing CONs all the time, it's stuff that I wouldn't expect. You know, it was no big deal. But I will add to my statement, it's a very well put together application. Overall, it's a very well put together application. Just because there were some technicalities that some was, you know, it could not go forward without those resumes and a couple other problems. It's a well put together application, in my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, and I've only been doing it for um, I anticipate, I gotta wait for Larry and Mark to get back to me on this to see if they agree. I anticipate that there's a very strong possibility this will be approved as complete in the next day or two, which will mean then we've gotta schedule the public hearing. I just talked to Ken just before the meeting and we will hold that public hearing in Eigensburg um, uh, either at the hospital or he's well, he has another location am I correct? We'll do, we'll do the hospital forget to do the center we will do the hospital <laughs> um, neutral territory so uh, we've got to schedule that get the hearing officer get the certified mail out and all that and I've also got to write the uh, letter for the cover letter and get it to Dana for the uh, F and C's to be reviewed. Um, all of that has to be done once it's declared complete. And we will have to have, in no the first Monday in November, we'll have to hold a meeting to vote on it because of the timeline. So um, I will take care of 
setting up your hearing officer and we use, I'd like to use that same yep, and I'll do the do the ads for the paper and Ann and Kurt will work on doing the mailing uh, do we want to do more than one paper being a target I'll, I'll work with work with Ken on what's the all main right. one up there and we'll get all that taken care of all right yeah, feel we'll free get to call me because I'm you know yep we'll get it all taken care of for you so that it all goes out once you send us an email after you your committee has met yes. and said yes. everything's good, then we'll we'll start working right away on that. Uh, some more on the C one report. Uh, I believe there's a big change that took place at the state level that we no longer mail the C one stuff in. No. It all goes electronically from Ann's office. I believe you have the account all set up or something. Maybe uh, it's maybe just. Not paperwork that we used to submit instead of mailing it we're going to submit it through the secure hope commerce system um, which both kurt and i have accounts for in the office so that's how we're going to be doing the mm -hmm. f and c's and that's how the application will actually be transmitted at the end so so the application that i have that's the original will become the file copy at the office when it's all done there's going to be a few other things we've got lax on over the years we was doing it but we've got lax we got to go back to uh that's behind the scenes stuff um there's a few other little changes taking place uh, so that's my c1 any questions any comments from the state down there sounds good to me Air medical. There has been no meetings. Um, that was kind enough to send out the clearinghouse report. And I just got last night. I got the the next one, so I'll put that out in the mail. Okay. I'll email that to everybody tomorrow. And that's all I got. Kobe, anything to report under air medical? Nothing new. Um, we do have a new clinical based supervisor, Luke uh, Gaskowski. He, he was not able to attend um, tonight, but. I'll have them attend some of the future meetings uh, to get his name and face out here. He's a new supervisor in the place. That's for the Watertown base. <laughs> okay. County reports. Um, Charlie um, was under the weather, so he wasn't able to join us. And Bob McKenzie had a prior commitment, so uh, Deb Fultz will be reporting for Jefferson and Lewis counties for us. Uh, Charlie asked me to pass on that uh, there are only a few people that are signed up for the EMS training day at Fort Drum. That's this Saturday. And um, uh, tomorrow's the last day to sign up for it if anybody is interested in doing that. Uh, if enough people don't sign up, then it will be canceled. So if you do, are still interested in and want to sign up, uh, I'll give you the who you uh, email. It's Ian Stuckert. I A N S T U C K E R T, and I'll give you his email, lowercase i a n dot e dot stuckert dot mill m i l at mail dot mill. Anybody want me to read that again? Deb, we can send that out in the morning. Okay. Okay, uh, they'll send it out again tomorrow. So tomorrow's the last day uh, to sign up. Uh, uh, Charlie also said, oh, I got, I got it on here. Charlie also said that he will be uh, sending the draft MCI plan, Jefferson County's draft MCI plan, uh, to Kurt uh, so that he can send it to the REMAC REM school to review it and have, if they have any comments to let him know. And Jefferson County's uh, classes are up and running. Um, on 927-16 to 1215-16, there will be a uh, CFR course in South Jeff. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday nights from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Debbie's teaching it, uh, if anybody is interested. And uh, my paramedic refresher will start October 25th with the challenge exams. The challenge practical will be October 29th. Uh, testing in March for anybody that's interested in a traditional paramedic. For uh, Bob McKenzie, he just asked that I would uh, give the names and uh, uh, the dates of the uh, upcoming EMT classes in Lewis County. 
starting November 16th to May 18th, 2016, Harrisville will be hosting an EMT class. Wednesday night, 6 to 9 p.m. Every other Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will also be an EMT class at Lewis County Search and Rescue that will start, start 12, 5, 16, testing May 18th, uh, 2016, Monday and Monday and Thursday nights, 6 to 9, 30 p.m. That looks like a Thursday. That looks like a Thursday, yeah. Um, and that's the Jefferson County and Lewis County report, unless anybody else, else has anything to add from those two counties. Joe, not to put you on the spot, do you, do you want to give an update for Jefferson County on the radio system, or is there? Um, yeah, I can give a brief. Um, <clears throat> Currently, right now, uh, with the county projects, uh, everything is still moving forward. Um, the county has purchased 12 um, parcels of land, um, and currently, right now, um, they're going through the engineering phase uh, and soil boring phase, um, so it's moving along quite nicely. Um, it still is quite a headache, regardless. Uh, because of the you know entirety of the operation um, but overall um, it, it will be a better fit for Jefferson County um, Motorola is our prime vendor and they are guaranteeing about a 97 98 percent coverage rate with portables um, throughout the county so um, everything is going smooth on that end um, we still anticipate late 2018 to probably early 2019 before we're even up and running oh, okay. um it's yeah it's that big of a project um you know we just put the bids out for the uh contractors for the uh, tower sites um which will probably close on by the end of the year and it depends on what their manpower and and uh equipment status is i mean we'd love to see seal up by the end of the year um, but we're probably talking maybe one or two sites to even get going at the end. And of course, depending on what the weather's going to be like in December. So, but as things come about, I'll just try to keep everybody updated. Let's go on ahead. Very good. Thank you. Carol, St. Lawrence County. Okay. We haven't had a meeting since um, the last Remsco meeting. But what they are continuing to have is the leadership meetings which seem pretty productive, but we still have um, some of the agencies that really need to be at these meetings not coming, and they're the ones that seem to be having problems um, getting their, their squads out on time. Um, we did ask that um, when they're being, um, if you're not going to be able to be dispatched a day, to at least let dispatch know so that they can automatically have somebody else um, starting also so there are long long times waiting while you're trying to get somebody to the station and and they aren't available um, the plane is back in Potsdam and continuing to encourage everybody with traumas to go to Potsdam as they're still pursuing their level three um, certification actually just to add are you is a, are you up for ACS verification? Or is it, are they coming this month? They're coming October. Or October, I mean. I thought I had heard that. Site visit for our uh, consultative visit for our level three trauma designation. Okay. Um, just to kind of add a little to her report, currently right now there are two BLS classes going on. Mr. Meyer is teaching one, um, and he's doing. God bless him. He's doing a Saturday all day class. Um, and I am teaching on campus at SUNY Canton, a BLS original. So I think he's got like 20 students. Um, I, I was at 24, something like that. Um, and my understanding is that the critical care class has 24, 24 which is the, but they didn't hold one last year. And that's huge for the, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know that we've ever had that many enroll in a critical care class. So I was, I almost, I was like, wow, really? That surprised me. 
Um, so that's kind of what's going on for classes. There's a refresher that's going to be starting. Uh, we're, we're waiting on that, right? They're looking at doing a refresher in Star Lake, and they're also looking at doing a refresher in Canton, right? No, Star Lake. Star Lake. Okay. So that's where we are with um, classes up there. So we had a lot of discussion at the leadership meeting, which still continues to have good turnout from many of the agencies. But as Carol stated, they're not necessarily the um, agencies that are having problems. But we are seeing a good working relationship develop there. We're sharing resources. And um, we actually had a lot of good food in August, too, as well, <laughs> for a picnic. Um, but it's a great group. Uh, we've talked a lot about known status. And I will tell you, this group here, the, the REMSCO, is charged with um, looking at the systems. And we really need to take a close look at the St. Lawrence County system. Um, and I will not lie to you that last week or the week before, they had to put out a, a county all call for any available ambulance to cover a call because it had gone so many rounds. And it wasn't because the neighboring agencies were busy, I mean, and the area was not covering their own. And the other agencies, which, you know, takes is a strain for the surrounding agencies, um, they were busy. Their ambulances were all out. So that's kind of scary in my book and something that we really need to be watching closely um, and paying attention. You know, our region does incorporate all three counties, and we... Ann and I kind of spoke that um, I may look to get on the agenda after the first of the year with the legislators up there and do a report and give them an overview so that they understand. Um, we had an agency in St. Lawrence County that um, wasn't responding to the state, wasn't responding to Ann on getting their CON paperwork in, their renewal, and it had gone like four months late. And um, I made a call to the town supervisor, and lo and behold, in 10 minutes, the agency was calling me, and we're going to get it done today, we're going to get it out. And I followed up with, with Syracuse and that agency, and that stuff has been done. So sometimes we need to go a different route. So. Um, we'll probably be looking at doing that and I'll go in and do a presentation to the county so that they're aware of the, the EMS crossroads that they're at up there and, and maybe they can work with the agencies and, and resolve some of these issues. But they need to be made aware of it, so that's what we'll, that's what we'll do. Old business. Uh, Debbie already reported on the Fort Drum trauma training. This is this is kind of frustrating because this is an excellent opportunity to hear the uh, docs out there at Fort Drum talk about what's going on. And we've seen more and more often what they're doing a year, 18 months, two years down the road. We're doing we're doing in in civilian. So it's a really great opportunity to hear from these folks that are on the front lines what's happening. If you've never been to the Mystic and the Sim Labs, it's amazing, amazing to see all that stuff. And you know, these guys are giving up a day to do this for us. So I really hope that we can get that number up so that we can continue with that. And uh, lunch is free in the Red don't have enough people they're canceling it, correct? Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. It would be sad to to see that happen. So did, did that get posted out? I mean I remember asking Ann because I hadn't heard anything about it. I'm Since pretty sure they sent it out. Well, we, it's posted on our website, so. It is posted. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't get on the website. Sure. Yeah. And we're going to re-blast it out tomorrow yeah. with a big exclamation point registered by today three by 3 o'clock. Yep. <laughs> I will suggest that you probably have the same problem we have on the fire side. Now we send out stuff about meetings and stuff like that. It goes down to 200 names. And if you ask the line firefighter or any fire department, he won't have a clue what's going on because the word never filters out of whoever gets the email. I know, and that's why we encourage folks to just con I'll put them on a mailing list. All they got to do is contact my office. And that, that kind of brings up uh, something that Lee brought up at State Council, and she brought it up the meeting prior as well. 
some of the frustration is we have email addresses for agencies that is, you know, hotgirl79 at gmail. We need to have agency, we need to have agency emails so that we know if people leave, and, and that happens, that the email is still getting to the agency. So if your agency doesn't have its own agency email and you need help with that, Kurt and myself, we'd be glad to help you get that set up. We really need to have agency emails so when we do have the turnover that the agencies are still getting that information. So um, when, when uh, Mr. Farrell sent out the last, last things and he sent these out to these agencies trying to, you know, find out their status on, you know, doing the updated information and some of the emails, you couldn't even tell who they were because it wasn't, it wasn't an agency. So um, if you can go back, spread that word that we really need to have agency emails. As Ann said, she'll put whoever on it so we can have it go to the agency and you can have it go to all 20 of your members at your organization. That's not an issue, but... We, we need to have good email addresses for agencies. Any other old business? Question on the Fort Drum thing. Are people going to have, didn't Fort Drum just upgrade their security where you got to have a passport or something? Yeah, they got a plan There's a in form, place. and that, that was included in the thing there. There's a form mm -hmm. to fill out to be able to get on base. Yep, you're absolutely correct. And if you do yeah, this, it supposedly it makes it much easier. Charlie said that there, at the Jasco meeting, Charlie said there's going to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Meeting everybody at the gate. As long as you're signed up. Yep, as long as you're signed up. And you can only use the uh, gate off Route 11, the main yep, gate. It's got to be Route yep. 11's gate. Yep, that's all. The form is in there. You can just, it's a PDF. You can type it right in to send it right on. So, but you're, And it's you're not good asking good a lot of information. Smart it's license or a passport anyway, yeah, as I'm told. Am I right? No. They, no. They pass those requirements, but they haven't gone into effect yet. It, it's, it's been an ongoing requirement for probably the last year or so. If you do not have a military or government issued ID, you need somebody to escort you right. in. Okay, you can, you can have I a passport or whatever, but you got to have you got to have a government issued ID. But I thought even then, you still today you've got to have in addition to the escort, you've got to have now either a passport or a smart. Well, you're gonna have to have a picture ID at any rate. Uh, they may have added the passport or the enhanced license. Added, uh, You've had to have a picture ID right now. Gone. Like for this thing this weekend. Uh, on our new business, I'll share that uh, I have um, a CIC course in Syracuse on November uh, 12th and 13th, with most likely the follow up date being the 21st for uh, the, the second mini presentation. Uh, the prerequisite is you have to be a certified lab instructor to get into it. Uh, and uh, love to see people come down. I believe that's posted on our website as well and has been mm -hmm. sent out. Yep. Correct. We'll continue under new. Dan, is, would you like to um, add anything? This is Dan Clayton. He made the, the uh, trek up from Albany to see us, wanted to, to um, make one of our meetings and talk with us. And well, basically, I just wanted to uh, say thank you for having me. Uh, I was also um, pleased to be able to make it to the REMAC meeting earlier and the training ed meeting in between the REMAC and REMSCO. Um, uh, I, I enjoy working with your council chair. I, I work with Debbie on uh, a lot of issues and matters uh, between the region and the state. Uh, I continue to work with Ann. Ann and I have known each other for at least 20 years, I think. Stop uh, dating we were, uh, me. <laughs> originally from the same area, so it's a pleasure to continue to work with her. Uh, she's just uh, a grand lady to work with. Um, I do want to just bring out that, uh, you know, right from Director Burns, that, uh, you know, and I think I've heard it talked about here in pieces tonight that our system is really in trouble. And that's not just this region, it's the state, it's the, it's the whole state. I can't speak for the nation, but it's, it's, we're in dire straits in EMS. And I think, um, you know, I, I would put out there to you that, you know, you stay involved with your uh, local regional EMS system. Uh, you talk about your concerns with your, uh, with, your, with your regional council. I know you are the regional council, but I know there are also people that will be watching this webcast that may not be on the council that may just, you know, be an EMT from a local service. I encourage you to communicate with your regional council, your state agency reps, like Mr. Morrissey and myself from the central office, 
um, and give us ideas and give the council ideas as to what you think may help the system. Um, I'd also put out there that you know there's been a, a big push for safety of providers. I want to continue that push for um, you know to keep the, the safety of the providers in mind and your patients. Obviously, our patients are, are number one, but uh, we also need to take care of ourselves. Not well, not only while we're on calls, but for healthy living as well, um, physically, <coughs> mentally, emotionally. So um, just keep safe out there and. Um, you know, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. John, did you have anything from the regional office perspective? No, I just, uh, again, um, we're just, uh, Mike Bogosi and I are getting out and about. We're trying to do some spot inspections and other things that we haven't been able to do in the past, and uh, we'll see you out there. Safe trip home, guys. Thank She's, you. I, I realized under old business, I wanted to share with you folks the results of the survey monkey that we sent to the critical care. So we're going to do that while she's pulling that up. Um, under other new business, how many people in here were aware of the SEMSCO go-to meetings that they've had the last few months where you could call in and it was specific topics? Um, they've had over 100 people on some of the calls. Has anybody in here participated in any of those? Well, it, it gave me a thought that maybe we would like to try it for our region and maybe we could look at some regional issues and it, it's a great opportunity to find out best practices out there, what people are doing, but also identify any critical issues that us as the REMSCO should be looking at. So there's going to be some more to come. Um, I may have, we may even do a survey monkey and have people identify their top three items. And based on that ranking, we would start with those items. And um, I want to do them at night because majority of our folks are volunteers so that they can participate. And uh, maybe we can get some good information out of that that we can share with the state, but we can also maybe work on some, some issues here in our, in, our, in our area. So more to come on that, so look for some information on that. And hopefully we can get some good participation and try to address some issues that we have. So, so if you remember last, last time, um, I'd given you some questions that we developed to do in SurveyMonkey to survey our critical cares in the three county region. So um, we sent out initially, uh, I think we sent a little over 100 of them. Uh, we identified some folks maybe that have left the area. Um, so in all, we ended up with 68? I don't know. Something. 68. Six, yeah, 68 responded out of 93. Okay. So how long have you been a critical care tech? Your was thing locked in. Oh, I thought I moved it. <laughs> so we, that's how long have you been? Mom? Yeah, the first one was how long have you been a critical care? Um, so you can see that uh, at least 10, but less than 20, and 20 and more uh, tied at 19. It was suggested that maybe we should have done even a larger, greater than 20. But this was the first time that Ann and Kurt and I had used Survey Monkey, and we were pretty proud that we got it They're done and that we got questions asked and that we got it to go in there. So the next question was, are you actively providing and... Whoops, sorry, I went too far. And 63 said they were and five said they were not. Uh, indicate the range that best, uh, you know, your age range. So you can see that the highest age range was 36 to 40 for critical cares out of the 68 that uh, surveyed and answered. The next one is what agencies do you actively take call with? And uh, we had a good uh, response from throughout the area with the responses to get them completed. We're just kind of slowly going through. If anybody has a specific one they want to know, let, let us know. But it looks like uh, for the majority, of our agencies answer that did have critical cares. Um, the AMT agencies got emailed too by mistake. Uh, do you pr plan on pursuing paramedic? Uh, 26 said yes, 42 said no. Uh, then we asked them if you planned on pursuing, when do you s anticipate starting? Uh, we had 10 that said in the next year, 13 that said in one to two years, and then the 31 again that said they do not plan on pursuing it. So we asked them why they did not plan on pursuing it, 
and distance to paramedic program, uh, time commitment, and other uh, were listed in there. And then we added a question uh, John Morrissey suggested if an advanced standing class were to be offered to bridge from a critical care technician to a paramedic, would you be interested? And we had a nice response of yes there. So 46 said yes if we were able to do that. So that was a good number. Uh, we asked of them, are, how many of you are in the research program? 54 are in the research program, 11 are doing traditional. And then how many calls did you respond to in 2015? And 41.18% responded to more than 150 calls for our region last year. Then we asked this year where you were at, and uh, more than 20 but less than 100 led that category. I think that was the last question, wasn't it? And that was the one question we received feedback saying, you know, some of the folks are responding to, you know, four or five hundred calls a year um, in some agencies. So we should have put greater values in there. So we did also send a survey to the agencies and we asked for some data that was the other questions. And we haven't received all those back. So we're going to reach out to them again and see if we can get those. We. Uh, anticipate that the reason some of them weren't completed was they probably are doing manual PCRs and just don't have the time to count and get us those numbers. So uh, we will reach out again. You've got what, 17 out of 43? So we still are still are lacking some. So but when you're talking with some agencies. Take a look at how many reminders I've sent. <laughs> you can see the history of reminders there. One of those 43 doesn't count, it's me. It was a test. So really there's only 42, because so, I don't have an agency. So Dr. if you Wood, talk yeah. with some folks, um, you know, that's part of what you are when you're sitting on the REM school as your ambassadors for your region. Try to encourage the agencies to help get us this. Um, on the CC tag, now that you've seen this information, um, I will share that with the rest of the committee, but I did not want to do that until you had an opportunity to see it first. So uh, we will get that information out to them, but it would be very beneficial if the agencies could, could give us their, their information as well. So as Jim had mentioned, or I'm sorry, as Ron had mentioned, we will need to have another meeting. So we're looking at Monday, November 7th. Uh, we will see if this place is available and notify you as soon as possible. Also gave you the proposed REMAC and REM still schedule for next year. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about the schedule for next year? Yep. It is. Yes, first Monday. First Monday. What you wanted. <clears throat> Does anybody else have any new business or Something else that we may have forgotten to cover. Did we cover Craig leaving? No, we did not. Um, um, Craig Ballard um, has retired. Um, and um, we went back and found that he's been on the council since 1976, I believe. 79. And um, we were trying to get him here tonight. Um, we do have something to present to him. And we'll see if we can't get him here to give that. Um, he is past chair of the of the council, and um, just decided it was time to slow down a little bit and enjoy a little bit more. And um, he will be sadly missed. He has a lot of knowledge and expertise that he's uh, been able to enlighten us with over the years. So. He's already missed on the ceiling committee. He was my right arm a lot of times, but but I have good committee still. So. And Craig has been a long term friend. Well, Ron, there's only two of us left. Huh? There's only two of us left. That's right. That's right. You and I. Does anybody else have any new business? Are you original or not? Not one year after. One year after. So I'm the only original one left. Wow. Motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I, I second motion that motion. to adjourn. Just a second. Thank you so much. It was so hot. I